Hi everyone, welcome to uh, this live webinar, um, part of the Collectors Conference on GB Stamps. We're having at allaboutstamps.co.uk. Um, this is the fourth and the final live webinar in the series. Um, so thank you to everyone for coming along to the others and I hope you enjoy this one, I'm sure you will. Um, today we have John Davies, he's the immediate past president of the Great Britain Philatelic Society. And uh, many people will know um, John's involvement in Stamp Active Network uh, over the years as well has been very, very involved in that, helping young people um, get into stamp collecting, which is fantastic. Um, so the title of the display is a Jubilee Reminiscence. And um, I'll hand over to John now. If you have any questions during the presentation, if you can use either the chat or the Q&A facility, um, doesn't matter which, and I will be looking after those. And then once uh, we come back on at the end, we can go through those questions with John. So over to you, John. Thank you, Matt, and thanks for that introduction. Um, welcome to this talk on the 1890 Penny Postage Jubilee celebrations. Um, my interest in this area started back in 1990 when I went along with my children who had started collecting stamps to um, the International Exhibition at Alexandra Palace, um, one of those big events that's held only once every 10 years. And there we launched Stamp Active. I'd been running a club and had suggested there ought to be more help for people who wanted to get involved in youth philately. And this was launched at Stamp World London 90. Uh, if you looked at the catalog there and on one of the stands, they were selling souvenirs of the reproductions of the uh, commemorative postal stationery that had been used in 1890. And I bought myself one of the original envelopes that had been used in 1890. Uh, and sent it to myself. And from that little mistake, I en have ended up with quite a substantial collection. If you uh, listen to Nick Armour's talk, uh, Genesis talk the other day, uh, on Thursday, um, about the reforms that led to the introduction of uniform penny postage, uh, that serves as a useful introduction to this, to this area. Um, uh, it had been regarded by 1890 as a, as a great success. In, in, uh, before the introduction of uniform penny postage, the uh, postal rates were both complicated and expensive. And this, this um, envelope here, this wrapper, um, is a letter that's gone from London to Somerset and was charged eight shillings and fourpence. Now in those days, uh, people paid, or usually paid for their letter on receipt. So that was the equivalent of a postman knocking on your door and asking for 80 pounds. Uh, the introduction of uniform penny postage obviously made it um, much more accessible to a great number of people and led to huge improvements in education, in trade uh, and social uh, uh, contact generally. So by 1890, it was being celebrated as a huge success. Planning for it actually began in 1889 when the post office formed a committee um, to think about what they might do. And one of well, their first steps was to ask De La Rue to produce designs for a commemorative postage stamp. And 11 hand painted essays were produced. They're illustrated in a book on the right hand side there. Um, uh, and uh, uh, although they were well received, um, it, the post office decided it was gonna to be too expensive to replace all the existing plates. Uh, so they decided not, not to go ahead with that particular issue. But other things uh, uh, were, uh, did take place in 1889. There was a uh, bazaar to celebrate uh, 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 uniform penny postage at the St. Martin's League, Roland, uh, and uh, the post office had a bit of a dry run for a conversazione um, a conversazione is a, is a social gathering, um, and although no um, postal items exist, there is a program of, of music, uh, and uh, Roland Hill's family also had an event at the beginning of 1890. The official celebrations actually began with a dinner um, at the Hoban restaurant in London, attended by 300 um, officers of the, of the post office, and you see here here, um, uh, uh, the front of a menu card, and also the place card for the dinner, which was actually used, uh, they used an original Mulready design for the place card with obviously people's names uh, put on them. But the first um, 
main event was organised by the City Corporation of London at the Guildhall. It was held over three days, opening night on the Friday, the Saturday uh, and, uh, and the Monday. It was a royal event uh, attended by the Prince of Wales and over the three days, over 20,000 people visited the, the exhibition and they went to a huge amount of trouble to do, you know, provide entertainment of all, all sorts of things. Um, uh, that in, uh, and uh, I suppose the most important feature of that was it also led from a philatelic point of view to the uh, introduction of uh, the first commemorative postal stationery and the first special hand stamps. But there was a great deal to see and the um, architect's map from the program on the right hand side basically to show people how they should uh, work their way around the building. One of my favorite items from my collection is the actual invitation for this event. Um, it's quite a large piece, larger than, than, than A4. And the idea was that you kept the right-hand side as a souvenir and handed in the coupon um, at, at the exhibition. And it's quite an attractive item, I think. And at its centerpiece is a reproduction of a VR penny black with the letters JL added uh, for Jubilee London. And the centerpiece, as they were specially re-engraved um, for use uh, in, in, the, uh, in the design. Uh, and this is, uh, these proofs uh, are really a, a great rarity. Um, and I say one of my favorite things. At the exhibition, as I mentioned, there were all sorts of things that you could um, see. Uh, there was a fully working post office. And so all the mail from central London was take, taken to the Guildhall to be sorted and stamped. And mail coaches arrived and delivered mail at the, at, at the front. Um, there were other special features, um, such as a reproduction of the of a 1790 post office, um, an army post office, the Edison phonograph, as well as program music, uh, programs of music and exhibits of postal history, and of course, and of course stamps. And in the centre there, you see one of the exhibit labels, also printed by Delarue, of um, uh, the displays of caricatures of the Mulready envelope. One of the highlights and gems of any collection to do with this event are uh, what are known as the Guildhall proofs. The Inland Revenue asked for various stamps to be specially reprinted for display at the Guildhall. Um, and you've got the original die one, uh, die two and die three penny and and the and the, and the uh, halfpenny uh, as well as the penny halfpenny and, and tuppence the two on the right hand side the the, tup, the tuppence here uh, and the penny halfpenny are images from the royal collection uh, and i've never seen um uh, any of those actually offered for sale in the last in the last 30 years so these items are, are really the great rarities of uh, of this uh, of this subject. Because so much was, was, was going on, uh, there's quite a lot, a lot of ephemera and associated like, philatelic items you, you can collect. Uh, here you, you can see images of the uh, badge that was worn by the committee, various tickets, uh, and, and uh, uh, the item on the bottom right, the uh, envelope to the Prince of Wales, is actually one that appears to have been sent by HCR, that was Henry Cecil Rakes, the, the Postmaster General. Again, okay, another exhibit label here, um, one of the programmes uh, 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 which was given to the, ce the celebrities that were there, if you like, which was uh, in red leather and, and uh, programmes of the concerts, uh, Edison's phonograph and uh, the telegraph. Now this was a working telegraph, so people would actually send and receive messages at the exhibition, and you can see one illustrated on, on the left-hand side. Uh, the item in the middle uh, is again a particular highlight for my collection because I almost bought it by accident because it was looking so tatty, but when I opened it up inside, it had got the original um, punch tape from the exhibition and is actually addressed to Constance, Hill's, to Constance Hill, uh, Roland Hill's niece, uh, by the chief electrician to the post office. So uh, always look inside the envelope is my, uh, 
uh, advice from uh, uh, over the years. As I mentioned, um, this event also led to the issue of Britain's first commemorative postal stationery. Uh, this was a, a, a penny letter card that was actually sold for sixpence. Uh, the event was actually a charitable event because they were raising money for the Roland Hill Benevolent Fund. And they originally printed only 10,000 of these envelopes and they, uh, sorry, of these cards, and they sold out on the first night within the first three hours. They did actually manage to print another 1,500 during the course of, of the event, um, uh, but it was a, a, a particular success. The item on the right is actually an advertising flyer that I believe was given out at the 1790 post office in, in, in a sort of words uh, style of, 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 of that time and is quite a, a, a bit of fun. Also, uh, as I mentioned, this event also led to the introduction of the first decorative hand stamp, an octagonal, oct octagonal star. Uh, and uh, uh, people produced all sorts of, uh, of items to send to themselves as souvenirs at, the, at this event. So uh, if you like this, the 1890 exhibition was also the, 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 the first philatelic souvenirs. The hand stamps are in two types. There's a plain hand stamp, uh, which you can see um, in the middle on a penny black, um, which is a, 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 of a sort of rubber hand stamp. But there was also a metal hand stamp, which had a cha changeable date code in the middle. Uh, and this was the one that was actually applied on postal items. And the uh, number in the middle is believed to indicate the hour uh, that it was uh, handled at the, at the exhibition, although it's quite noticeable the, that the number 11 doesn't exist. Uh, it seems that the post office forgot to order two number ones. So uh, uh, mistakes do happen. Immediately after the um, exhibition closed, there was another ev event organized by the London Philatelic Society. Uh, the London Philatelic Society is now known as the Royal Philatelic Society London uh, because the uh, Duke of Edinburgh um, who attended uh, th this event later became its, 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 its patron. Uh, and again, some very attractive items. Again, uh, with, with this, there was a philatelic first in that the, uh, one of the exhibits was uh, allowed uh, you to see demonstrations of uh, perforating and overprinting stamps. And these led to the first Cinderella stamps. Again, you can see an example of a block of four of the blue uh, at the bottom, they also exist in, in, in brown. But the, the uh, post office main event was actually held at the South Kensington Museum in July um, 1890. Uh, the admission card for this wasn't quite as attractive as the one at the Guild Hall, but you can see um, below it a, a, a photograph of the um, exhibits in the Science Museum, so, sorry, the Science Library, uh, which has at its centre the actual 1790 post office uh, uh, there. And again, there were flyers advertising that and, and uh, tickets. Again, this was a royal event. This one was attended by the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh by over 4,000 people on the evening. Uh, and again, as at the Guildhall, many of the exhibits that had been uh, shown at the Guild Hall were also um, uh, at South Kensington, even though it was only open for one night. But in addition to many of the things that I men mentioned earlier, there were a couple of uh, extra features. One was a, a pneumatic tube post um, and, and also an electrophonoscope was, was shown for, for the first time. Um, the electrophonoscope was actually intended to be what perhaps we would call a precursor to the video phone, where not only could you speak to somebody down a speaking device, down a telephone, but you could see them at the same time. Um, but it was only later when uh, William Priest, uh, the chief electrician of the post office, published his biography, he, he disclosed that actually there was nothing electrical about it at all. It was just a sequence of mirrors. But uh, he obviously foresaw future times. 
the uh, item here is, is one of the cards that went through the tube post because you could send a message uh, down the tube and ask a question. Uh, in, in this case, somebody was asking about Jubilee envelopes uh, and got a reply, uh, but more of that later. Um, and again, you can see some of the other things that people could take away from the displays of the phonograph uh, and, and the like. Again, as at the Guildhall, there were special hand stamps produced. Uh, uh, in this case, quite a variety, because uh, in addition to the actual um, item for, for, for cancelling mail, there was a smaller hand stamp for things like telegraph forms a special cachet that you could get at the 1790 post office. Um, you could get a special cachet at the 1990 post office. And again, you've got two tube post cachets, one to send it and one to get a reply. Now, uh, it might seem a bit much all of that, but these were produced um, uh, not only as souvenirs, but to raise money, because again, uh, you could get these um, put on all sorts of, uh, of items. Uh, uh, for payment of a penny, and the money was used uh, to go to the Rolling Hill Benevolent Fund. So uh, again, you can see how somebody's used an old penny black um, entire um, uh, to repost it to themselves. And again, after the success of the um, Jubilee, uh, Jubilee um, postcard at the Guild Hall, the post, post office very quickly thought they perhaps want to do something themselves. So they didn't feel they could produce another letter card. So they designed a uh, envelope uh, inside of which uh, had a, uh, um, a message card. And on the top left here, you see the original sketch by the assistant secretary to the post office of what he thought it might look like. Uh, and, and between May and the 2nd of July, um, they managed to design and get processed uh, uh, and orders for 250,000 of these envelopes. Immediately uh, after the show uh, the, the, at the South Kensington, which was held on a Wednesday, another version of the envelope appeared in, uh, on, in, in London. Uh, the post office were very unhappy about this because it was sold for a penny um, whereas the, uh, uh, their envelope had been sold as a shilling, again, to raise money for charity. And it indicated with postage one penny, perhaps to people who didn't know better that postage had been paid. Uh, so they were concerned about the loss of revenue. And it also featured the, the, the VR uh, Royal Cipher, which again was not uh, certainly welcomed by the post office. And they very quickly got their uh, solicitors onto the, onto the case. And Mr. Elliot, who had, um, made no secret of this uh, because he was advertising it in the papers, um, very quickly had to apologize to the post office uh, and uh, claimed that he had only produced it after, the, after the, uh, the event because people were disappointed they could no longer buy a card uh, given that it was uh, they were only on sale for one day. Um, in fact, he was a naughty man, Mr. Elliot, because uh, he'd already printed them before the event uh, because there are very, a couple of examples known that were actually cancelled at South Kensington. So uh, he certainly had already planned this well in advance, um, but he did get away with it. He was never actually prosecuted. Again, another version of the envelope appeared later in, in July. Um, this was actually a caricature by Harry Furness. Um, Harry Furness was the cartoonist for Punch uh, and produced all sorts of funny things um, over his lifetime. Uh, the, the caricature, um, obviously, uh, uh, if you look at it, is, is very different to the original envelope in, in this case, in that it shows the hardworking uh, postman carrying a huge sack of, uh, of, of letters in 1890, a little different to the 1840 postman on the left, uh, and shows, instead of Roland Hill, uh, Henry Seckle, Se Cecil Rakes, the Postmaster General, with the words, he did not give us penny postage. Uh, and, and again, these are quite nice, nice, quite fun things to have. A medal was also produced during the year by Spink uh, in, uh, as well 
well as the, the bonds, there was a silver bonds, white metal, aluminium and uh, solid, solid silver. Uh, again, the post office weren't, uh, hadn't given approval for this, so they, they, they particularly weren't happy with it, but it, 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 at least that did, did go, go ahead. Um, if you look at the one on the right hand side, which is actually a silver proof, you'll notice that uh, they've spelt system with an I uh, instead of a Y, uh, which was corrected when the uh, envelopes, uh, sorry, when the medals were actually, actually issued. And finally, uh, at the end of the year, the post office produced a, uh, a Christmas card, which was um, uh, featuring obviously some of the postmarks and postal stationery, um, and, and again is a particularly uh, attractive item. Uh, there's an imprint in the centre which usually has 18, uh, 1991, uh, and it can be found in various different places in the middle of that. But there were also overprints for uh, for the offices of the post office. Um, these are much rarer than the the, than the uh, uh, the popular card. There were 23,000 uh, uh, printed of the ordinary postcard, and whereas there are only about 550 printed of the officer's card. And then another version, which you see um, uh, see here, which was actually printed for the Jubilee Committee, and, and there they only printed 100 of those. Uh, the cards were distributed around the country, and, and even some enterprising local people in Derby had uh, what some of theirs overprinted and, and the, the the ones which are overprinted in a different style are extremely rare. These were aren't uncommon uh, the the the, uh, the the cards, but surprisingly, um, in, in uh, 1977, a forgery appeared, um, which was spotted by. By, by stamp collectors. If you, if you see, see the forgery, it actually looks very, very close to the um, original uh, envelope. And in fact, it's hard to spot, spot the difference. But uh, I find that one of the easiest ways of telling the forgery uh, from the original is by the black marks uh, around the, the, the flagstaff. Uh, this was obviously um, something that was on the, the card that was being copied. The original card was printed in and it was surface printed, but the uh, forgery is actually printed in photogravure. Um, so if, if you want to spot the difference, that's the easiest way of, of telling it uh, apart, apart from the, um, uh, the technical aspects. But in reality, they both sell for the same money. So it doesn't make a, a huge, a huge difference in terms of uh, uh, the uh, uh, finding them. So, you know, that's a quick run through of the highlights of the 1890 Penny Postage Jubilee. Uh, it was a great celebration and I'd say a number of philatelic firsts. So I hope whatever you collect, you perhaps find something that might have been uh, a, a, of interest. Of course, it's a classic example of what's uh, now called open philately, uh, where you can, if you're exhibiting your collection, you can show uh, up to half of it which is, which is non-philatelic, so the ephemera and cards and medals and so forth. Um, I've always felt that uh, uh, in, in collecting in, in this way, this material adds interest to, to any collection. So uh, I'm a particular fan of it. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the variety of material that you've, that you've seen. If you'd have, then uh, I'll have to give a quick plug to the book that's been published this year, um, uh, by the Royal Philatelic Society, which obviously goes into a great more detail than I've been able to do today in this in this brief view. Um, it's available on 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 their website um, if you'd like to know more about this particular subject. And again, a plug for the GBPS. Um, I've had a huge help from being a member of this this society over the years. Um, it's a shame we can't meet at the at the moment, but we are doing online um, uh, talks as as well. Uh, and the journal, newsletter and website are uh, fantastic. Uh, and so my thanks to everybody who uh, um, uh, makes, makes that happen for the society, which uh, it seems to be going from strength to strength at the moment. So we're very, very pleased with that. And we're delighted to have been able to support this event as well. 
So that's uh, the close for me, but I'll be pleased to take any questions that uh, any of you might have. And thank you for listening. Thank you, John. Um, that was brilliant. Um, I've got a few questions, actually. Um, just, uh, you mentioned open philately there, um, and that kind of struck me as you were doing the presentation. There's obviously a crossover with this one between philately and social history, and maybe even, I'm not sure genealogy is quite the right term, but researching the, the people that were involved at that time. So do you have any um, research tips? Because it's not just looking at stamp catalogues or you know the normal kind of collecting, it's a bit more involved, isn't it? So how, how, how have you found out so much about the actual event? Well, in, in, in this particular case, we're, we're, we're quite fortunate that um, to start with, the post office produced its own book um, back in 1891 uh, about everything that happens. Um, okay. And, and, and so that's, that's been, a, been a starting point. But if you are doing research, particularly, you know, in, in, in GB philately, then people at the Postal Museum, um, the British Library, um, are, are really very, very helpful uh, when you start to try and find out more about, about the subject. Um, of course, over the years, I've met a number of people who um, had very good collections of this material and, and, and uh, people like Francis Kiddle, uh, sadly no yeah. longer, longer with us, yeah. um, who uh, he had probably the best collection of um, this material in the world at that time. Uh, and people like that were very, very willing to share their knowledge and enthusiasm for collecting areas. And that's one of the reasons for joining societies, whether it's your yeah. local one, things like the GBPS, the Royal Philatelic Society, because it's not um, necessarily about, uh, um, uh, you know, the technical side, for want of a better way of saying it. It's the people, uh, it's the stories that make this, that make collecting interesting. Um, yes. uh, and they've been a huge help to me over the years, various, you know, various people. Yeah, yeah. And that social aspect of, of philately, I think people from the outside of, of the hobby don't perhaps see that. They think it's, you know, just people on their own um, adding to their, to their yeah. albums. But actually, Stuck in a yeah it's uh, it's yeah the more social you are as you say that you know you share knowledge and enthusiasm oh there's always something to learn from other people yeah and of course going going to exhibitions uh particularly the big internationals and and things like stamp uh you know there's always people there willing to help you know dealers uh, yeah. as well they're actually quite uh, uh you know people like bill barrel andrew lager in the gb world are, are mm. very very willing to share their knowledge and, and uh uh, yeah, and and, and uh, give advice. Yes. Okay. And uh, I'll give a plug to Andrew Leisure um, because they they've um, partnered with the conference as well. So if you go to the website, <laughs> right. they've got a page on there. So um, if you want some material, um, go to them first and tell them who sent. You. Oh, they're always certainly happy to sell you stuff as well. It's the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't blame them. Okay. So um, got a few comments and questions. So Stephen asks, I've seen newspaper wrappers celebrating the exhibition are these a rarity or fairly common there are newspaper wrappers wrappers for the uh, london uh, philatelic exhibition the one that was organized um uh, at the portman rooms in, in in london there these these are relatively scarce you know i've okay. perhaps seen 20 or so uh, over the years advertised for sale but uh, um uh, you, you don't see them very often i in fact, I think Andrew Lage has got one for sale at the moment. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> it's almost like that was planned. But yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. Um, I've just got a, a question. This might be a silly question. The, the, the Guildhall event and all the events that went on in those in that year, how obviously it differs a lot from a modern um, philatelic event now, but are there any you know similarities? Would there have been dealers at that point there, there were dealers at the london philatelic exhibition i, I think um although there there isn't a, a list in the in the catalogues and okay. so forth but there although there were there were exhibits of postage stamps in this in the in a similar way to um to now um they and in those days they tended to be ad showing complete albums they weren't individual pages uh, and, and things uh, 
uh, you know, right, one okay. of the things that they valued in, in those times was the completeness of, of, yes. of, a, of a collection. So they were they were exhibiting complete albums rather than individual pages, but not not hugely different in, in that, that sense. But um, what always has struck me um, as tremendous about the 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 shows, the 1890s shows is you know you were seeing fully working post you know fully working post office sorting arrangements um uh, all sorts of wonderful displays mail coaches mm. music you know uh, given that they were very very short events they went to a huge amount of trouble to uh, yeah. to put things on and i think certainly it'd be nice to see um some of those things happening at uh, some of the shows now yeah yeah absolutely to make them much more exciting events rather than than, than and just looking at uh, dealer stocks and uh, yeah, exhibits. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I guess um, yeah, I, I, I like I like that the way they it, it was more complete in the collection in those days. Yes. Yes. Because I guess it was so much easier to do that. Yeah. yeah indeed. Yes. The number of stamps. So that's interesting. Um, got a few uh, thank yous. Um, so Alexios says wonderful material, beautiful presentation. Uh, many thanks, John and Jack. Shang as well says many thanks John wonderful talk and then Philip Seymour this is a little off topic um, but it says how are you helping younger people to start collecting so I know this isn't quite your role at the moment but you have been involved in it so it's always worth a, a mention and a plug isn't it well this yeah the stamp active network that we launched in in uh, 1990 is still going um, uh, in those days we used to produce um, uh, newsletters and, and handouts um, four times a year to centre people who were involved in uh, philately. Now, of course, all of this, these resources are online. Mm. So there is a very good stamp active website, uh, award winning website, um, with, with all of these resources av available to, to young people. Um, we produce activity books um, uh, uh, and they've got a series of those to give to potential collectors. And uh, we now run a free postal club called Kids Stamps, which yes. people, uh, children between the ages of uh, five and 19 can join for free. And we send them packets of stamps, uh, first day covers and the like, uh, uh, three or four times a year. Um, uh, just just if they send us a stamp to dressed envelope so we can, uh, uh, to, show the, show, to show that they continue to want the, the, uh, the items that we've got. Um, and there's other things too, which are all, 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 all on, on, on the website. So we're doing quite a lot. Um, uh, the, you know, what we've had to do now is to do that to replace some of the things that used to be promoted by Royal Mail with the Stamp Bug Club and things. Unfortunately, those sort of things um, uh, don't exist. So it's all about uh, collectors sharing their passion and enthusiasm for the hobby with young people. Yeah. Okay. And the um, the the mail sending stamps to, to young people in the mail um, yep. you're always, or they're, they're always after material aren't they uh, aren't they to send out yeah so, we, we you know we, we, we're very lucky that we receive donations from uh, people who've got surplus stamps um, and and they can post those uh, to um, our donations manager uh, peter barham who collects all of this and then distributes it to uh, the various people who uh, are, are organizing these uh, these sendings to to the children and obviously we have uh, we're, we're also usually at stampex of course stampex not taking place at the moment but mm -hmm. we're hoping to be back there next year um making uh, and, and you can always hand things in on the stand at stampex when it's yeah. uh, taking place okay brilliant um got one more questions come in from mark hayward it says what is john researching at present well that that's a good question um <laughs> <laughs> uh, having um, done, collected this for 30 years, it's, uh, it's, I sometimes think there's nothing more to learn. Um, uh, and then uh, all of a sudden something appears, uh, you know, uh, that you've never seen before. Uh, yeah. And I, I have had a couple of examples of that in, 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 the, last, in the last year. So um, even though you think you've, you, you know, you, you've done it to death, if you like, um, there's, there's always something something to learn. So I keep my eyes open um, all the time for uh, for new items, and uh, uh, I'm sure I can uh, uh, when I've got more time to spend at the postal museum uh, to go through all of their archives. There might be 
more things to to find that are hidden away that perhaps people haven't seen for, for years so yeah uh, but uh, also i've uh, uh, been tempted during lockdown to start something new mm. uh, i think many collectors will have, will have done that and so uh, nothing to do with the 1890s but i'm now uh, uh, researching the fire service oh okay uh, so which is something totally different so uh, uh, and, and and that's uh, uh, only come about because my son-in-law is uh, a firefighter right okay uh, and uh, again the stories you hear of what they have to do is yeah. you know is all inspiring really so that's that's something totally different but uh, uh, in terms of what i'm researching is some something uh, nothing to do with 1890 but but still to do with philately though that, so oh yeah so so yeah very much yeah. so yeah so, so what just correspondence the, you know, the, uh, well, I, I, at the moment, I'm just gathering philatelic material. I haven't, um, uh, I haven't bought myself a fireman's helmet yet, or <laughs> <laughs> or anything like that. But you never know. <laughs> yeah. Well, once you get it all together and do a presentation yes. on it, then it could be in full uniform. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> be a bit of fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Okay. Um, Diane King asks, can you recommend any websites that outline rare stamps, please? rare stamps question there um i don't know whether that's to buy or to see but again if you uh it, the the, the uh, um philatelic, philatelic collections of the british library mm. and the postal museum are amazing in terms of the material that you can view online and indeed see if you when you're able to visit those that, that those those places um and, and again going back to uh uh, what we said about societies, you know, you mm. can see some fantastic material if you go along to um, displays. Again, I hesitate to mention the GBPS again, but the, you know, the, the Great Britain Philatelic Society in the Royal. If ever you could able to go to their talks, there is some fantastic material on show. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, I'd recommend all about stamps. Of course. UK. We've had uh, uh, Richard Morrell. Got a new section in there, haven't we? Yes, yeah, um, and Richard from the British Library has, has done quite a few talks actually for us, and he writes for the magazine as well. Yeah. Um, so that's a, a great way to see some of their collections. Um, also, just to mention, Toby uh, Middlemist has just um, recommended Stamp Active. It's really helpful. Website's great, and the competitions that he's entered have been great fun. So I know Toby's um, done really well with some of his exhibits. Uh, in the past, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, a, a, a real example of you know people sometimes say, "Oh, kids aren't interested in stamps these days." Well, it's often because they've never seen them. Yeah. Uh, you know, they very rarely see a stamp on a letter the, 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 these these days. Mm. Um, there are so few few letters popping through the post box. Um, if children, you know, give a you know a, a, a child a box of stamps to go through, um, they'll be fascinated and ask loads of questions about what they're all about brilliant okay i think that's everything all the questions answered so thank you so much to everyone um and john thank you so much for your time um that was brilliant thanks for all your help with the conference and to everyone at the gbps uh, there's still two talks um to come they, they're pre-recorded uh, but they'll come live at two o'clock and five o'clock today over on allaboutstamps.co.uk so do have a look and there's some special offers on there as well to subscribe to the magazine and um, sign up for our newsletter if you haven't, um, that kind of thing. So have a look over there and, um, and thank you. So everyone have a lovely weekend and thanks, John. And thank you for organising the conference, Matt. It's been- Oh, you're very welcome. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.